before we start this video, a large thank you to Hunter, Riff, Ghost, Gabriel, Mexica Strength, and Steve for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Samuel Hartman for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, my friend. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to make our weapon-based action system. So I'm going to create a new script, and I'm going to call this weapon item-based action. So what is this, basically? Well, we're going to give all of our weapons actions depending on their action slots. So, for example, right bumper on a straight sword might be light attack, whereas on a stave, it might be cast a spell. So this is going to be the base class for all these actions. So let's start by opening that up and erasing the start and update functionality and dropping in our namespace as is per tradition. Apologies again if you hear any background noise. I'm still temporarily out of my office, but I think it should be fine. So let's make this derive from scriptable object because we're going to actually insert these on the weapon items. Let's make a public int for the action ID. This is going to come into play in the next episode, but we're going to put it here for now. And then let's right below that, just make a public virtual void. And we can call this attempt to perform action. Now, we're going to need a couple things here to perform this action. We're going to need the player that is performing the action so we can get some data from them. So I'm going to call this player performing action. And we're going to need the weapon item that this action is being used with. I'm going to call that weapon performing action. Now, since this is the base class, we have to ask ourselves, what's one thing that every weapon item action will need? Well, we're going to keep track of the weapon being used on our player. This will be very important in the future, and you will see why, but don't stress about it now. So I'm just going to make a comment here, and we're going to say that we want to keep track of which weapon our player is using. So basically, when I do an attack on my end, on your end, your game needs to know which weapon I'm performing that attack with. Um, so let's actually organize these scripts before we move on. I'm just going to drag all of these into their, their respective folders. And then I'm actually going to make a new folder. Now you could put this new folder inside the items folder because it's going to be for weapon item actions. But I'm just going to give it its own folder because as this series grows, it's going to get pretty big. And I, I like just giving it its own section of organization. And there's no reason for that really. Like I said, this is just preference. It makes the most sense to me. And having it right here as its own folder is what makes the most sense to me. So let's drag our script in there, and then let's go into uh, the character folder. And I'm going to make a new base class called the Character Combat Manager. I'm also going to close out Discord real quick. And then inside the player folder, I'm going to make the player version, the Player Combat Manager. I'm going to open two of these scripts up. I'm going to insert uh, our namespace and erase the start and update functionality as is per tradition. And I'm going to make the Player Combat Manager derive from the character combat manager. So after that's done, I'm going to make a variable um, inside of this for the current weapon that's being used. So I'm just going to insert my namespace here and delete the start and update functionality like so. And then I'm going to make a public weapon item variable current weapon being used. Now we could just go to the weapon item action. Whoops, got to reload that because I moved it. And we could just say player dot player combat manager. Um, it's going to give me an error because I don't have the player combat manager called yet as a variable. But we could just say that, and then we could say current weapon being used is weapon performing action, and this will be fine um, pretty much all the time because we're going to make this a server RPC, so we run this in other clients too. But just in case, and just so it's extra safe, and if we need to use it anywhere else besides the weapon item action system. I'm going to give it its own variable, a network variable. So public network variable int current weapon being used. And I'm going to save that. Now, over here, I'm going to copy and paste on current left hand weapon ID change. I'm going to rename it to on current weapon being used ID change. And then we're going to get the weapon from the database, the same as we do as before. But instead of assigning current left handed weapon, we're going to assign player combat manager dot current weapon being used equals current weapon. And again, this is going to give us an error because the player combat manager variable does not exist yet. So let's go ahead and make that. So let's go to the player manager. Where is that? Here it is. Hi, then inspector, because we don't need to see this public player combat manager. Going to call it player combat manager. On awake, we're going to say player combat manager equals get component player combat manager. Okay, let's save that. Now let's jump back over to the player combat manager and make our weapon item variable for a current weapon being used. I just now realized I've already got that made. I'm actually going to delete it from the base class because I'm not going to track it for the AI. 
at least not for all the AI, but I'll get into that later because that's a subject that warrants a lot of conversation. There's basically going to be a few types of AI, simple AI, then AI that mimic the player, and then other forms of AI, but don't worry about that for now. Not important, like I said. So back over here on, on Network Spawn, let's go down to our equipment. Let's say player network manager dot current weapon being used dot on value changed as in when this changes. And then when it changes, we're going to run our player network manager dot on current weapon being used ID change, just like that. Now, all we have to do is go over into our weapon item action and just make it so if we are the owner, because this will be ran on other uh, game objects and other clients. Then we're going to say player performing action dot player network manager dot current weapon being used dot value is equal to weapon performing action dot item ID. All right, let's save that. Now we need to know if this runs as well because we're going to run a test action before we do anything. So let's set up a way to run this function. So we're going to launch this in the player combat manager because this is a weapon action. So we'll say public void perform weapon based action. We're going to require the weapon item that is performing the action. So, or, sorry, the weapon item action that's being performed. So the action itself, and then the weapon item that that weapon action needs. So where are we going to run this from? Well, it's going to be called from our input manager, basically. And you'll see how this is going to all connect together very soon if you don't already. So let's uh, make a variable for our player manager. Let's create an awake method on the base class and override it here in case you want to add some additional logic in the future. And I'm sure we will. So I'm gonna make a protected virtual void awake here on the base class. And then on the parent class here, or sorry, the inheriting class, I'm going to override that. I'm gonna say player is equal to get component player manager because this rests on the same game object. Now down here in our perform weapon based action, all we need to do is one, perform the action locally, and then two, notify the server we've performed the action so we can also perform it on every other client. So I'm just going to say weapon action dot attempt to perform action. And then I'm going to pass the player and then the weapon performing the action. And then I'm going to make a comment here. Also perform this action on other clients. And you can word this however you want, honestly, uh, whatever makes the most sense to you. Just write a note here that clarifies that basically after we've ran this locally, we're going to notify the server and the server is going to run this on every other uh, client that has a representation of our player in their scene as well. Because there's a lot of actions in the future where it's more than just playing an animation, we're going to update some flags or do something. So we might want to run that in other places as well. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as a comment for now because we're gonna handle that in the next installment. Let's go over now and minimize Visual Studios and or actually jump back in here real quick um, and what we want to do is make this into uh, an asset we can create in our project. So we're going to use create asset menu, menu name is equal to, and then I'm going to, to say character actions here, slash weapon actions, slash, and then I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call this test action because we're actually not going to use this in the future. This is just a verify that works. And then I'm going to throw a debug.log. Um, the action has fired just to know that this is definitely ran and the code is functioning as intended. And now we can save that. So now we can minimize Visual Studios and wait for this to compile. Let's jump over to the weapon item script. And down here in our previously commented future to-do list, you see we have item-based actions. So let's make this real now. Let's just say header. I'm gonna call it actions. And for now I'm gonna do one. We're going to do one item-based action. So we'll say public weapon item action. I'm gonna call this RB action. But now we have something to think about. In the future, we're going to have, yes, a right bumper action, but we're going to have one for one handed and one for two handed. So they will be slightly different or they could be in some circumstances. For the case of something like a straight sword, it will always be the same. But anyway, I say this to say I'm going to say OH underscore RB underscore action. OH standard for one handed right handed action here. This just makes it so that if you want a different two-handed action in place, if you're tuning the weapon, then you can play that action instead of the regular one-handed action. Now, I'm gonna jump back over into Visual Studios here, and I'm going to basically go to my player network manager, and we're gonna make two new network variables. They're going to be is using right hand and is using left hand. This is just to keep track of which hand we are using during certain actions, and this will become very important when syncing data more later into the series, 
it's also going to be very important for the AI that mimics the actions of a player character instead of a monster or just a really dumb normal AI. So I'm going to initialize it at false and the read permission is everyone, the write permission is owner, pretty standard stuff. I'm going to call it is using right hand and then is using left hand. Now let's make a function to quickly enable and disable one of these. And we're gonna call this function every time we're using an input like right bumper, left bumper, LT or RT. So I'm gonna call it public void set character action hand. And this is just as it states, gonna turn one of the is using hands on the other one off. So we'll make a bool here, is it a right handed action? And if it is, we're gonna say is using right hand dot value is true and is using left hand dot value is false. And if it's not, we're gonna do the opposite. So if it's not a right-handed action, it must be a left-handed action, in which case we're going to say is using left hand is true and is using right hand is false. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you're only using one of the hands, it just means you're using the action on your left-handed weapon. So for example, if you have a power stance action on your left-handed weapon, you're still accessing it from that left-handed weapon. So that's what it's there for. Next, we're going to say player input, or we're gonna to go to the player input manager, sorry, and we're going to set up the input for our right bumper. So I'm just gonna to go to the player action input header here. I'm gonna make a serializable field so we can see it in the inspector if you want. And for a bool RB, this doesn't need to be serialized, it's just if you want to see it there to make sure it's never getting stuck or locked. I'm gonna say bool RB underscore input equals false. And then on the on enable, we have to set this up. So I'm gonna say player controls dot player actions dot RB, but you can see this is not set up yet. So let's go make a right bumper action. So let's go to our, I believe we call it player controls. Yes, we did. You can go to your player actions here. And if you want, you can just duplicate the jump button because it's going to be set up the exact same way. It's just a normal button. I'm gonna call this RB, all caps. I'm gonna open it up, and now it's not gonna be button south gamepad. You could say bumper, but you wouldn't get the generic gamepad result here. So I like using the gamepad result because it works for all the controllers. So I'm just gonna say right shoulder and select the gamepad one. Close that and save it. Now if I go back into Visual Studios, I no longer get an error. I say dot performed plus equals I equals greater than RB input equals true. All right, now let's actually make some functionality to do something when this input is turned to true. So I'm gonna make a private void handle RB input. The first thing you wanna do is if RB input is true, set it to false so this logic only runs one time. Now, I'm gonna make a to do comment. We don't wanna do anything if we have a UI window open in the future. So if we have a UI window open, just return. But right now we have no way to track that because we don't have any UI menu set up. But this is it to do, so I will put it here. It is very important. All right, right below that, we can make a comment here, or rather we can call upon which hand we're using before we do that. So we can say player dot player network manager, and I already forget what I call that function, so let's go back. Okay, set character action hand. Since this is right bumper, this will always be the weapon in your right hand slot, unless you're two handing your left weapon, which we will get to in the future. But regardless, we are going to say player dot player network manager dot set character action hand true. To do, if we are two handing the weapon, we want to run the two handed action instead of the one handed action. But for now, we don't have that, so we can come back to that. We can just simply say player dot player combat manager dot perform weapon based action, and we pass the right handed weapon because this is the RB input, and we have no way to detect if we're two handing the left weapon yet. And then we pass the right bumper action because this is the right bumper. And then we simply pass the current right hand weapon because this again is being used by the current right hand weapon. All right, now if we save that and call that in handle all inputs, this should function. So I'm just gonna say handle RB input. And for some reason it's not auto completing, it's because I said hand RB input, nice way to go. Fix that real quick, handle RB input, and then save and minimize this. There we go. Now jump back into the game here. Go to data, we actually create this action. So let's make a new folder for weapon actions inside our data folder. This kind of mirrors the scripts folder. And then we're gonna go to character actions, weapon actions, test action, like so. I'm gonna call this test action because this is just temporary. Next, let's go to our player prefab. And oh, we should go to the straight sword too and actually drop this action in. So let's just drag this test action in on the straight sword. There we go. And we can save go to the player prefab, and then we need to actually add our player combat manager or else we're gonna get an error. 
we need to call the function from the player combat manager. So let's put this here. I'm just going to drag it up under the player manager just for no other reason other than I feel like it belongs there. And now I'm going to start the game. I've loaded my straights around my hand. And if I press right bumper, the action has fired. There we go. So this is the framework for our item based actions. What we're going to do is make this so it basically plays an attack animation depending on what you're doing. And from there, we can make all kinds of cool actions like a running attack, a jumping attack, a rolling attack. And then we can have things so basically if you're using something like a straight sword, it's going to play a melee attack. But if you're holding a caster, it's going to cast a spell, etc., etc. So in the next episode, we're going to further expand upon this. We're going to set up our light attack and we're going to sync all these actions across the network so they perform as they should. And then you will be able to basically hit characters that join and kill each other. And once we get some of the basic actions down, we're going to make some basic AI and then we can establish a nice little game loop. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. And if you're watching this early, I hope you have a lovely week and a lovely weekend. And as always, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time.